Out, come on, move. Move. Come on, on a double. Double, no, double, no, double. No, no, no. Come on, you special boys. Move it. Move it. Come on, Coon, move it. Over there. You, in. Get up straight, boy. Attention. Name and number. 4737 calling, sir. So this is the daddy. The hard case. Carlin, is it? Is it? Yes, sir. Don't look much to me, Carly. You're the little toe rag of company officer at Rowley. Fancy yourself, dear Carly. Bumping officers, eh? Oh, it's it. Speak when I tell you that. So they sent you down here to be sorted out. You have heard of us, Carly, eh? Heard of us, have you? Yes, sir. And what did you hear? Nothing, sir. Well, I'll tell you here and now, lad, that nothing was not the correct information. Because we're having your stinking hooligan guts for garters. Right? Yes, sir. Pick it up. I said, pick it up. <sighs> Name and number. 4737. Carlin, sir. Get him out of there. Now, Carlin, move it. Go on over there. You, E. Stand up straight, boy. Name and number. Bastards. Bastards, bastards. Pick those feet up. Halt. In. Davis. Tension. Right, up those stairs. Move! Mr. Sands, this is Mr. Greaves. I'm the senior officer, and I run a wing. I run it. Right, Carlin? Yes, sir. Come down heavy, very heavy on anyone who doesn't grasp that fact. Right? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Angel, you're in a single room. Some of the lads here can be what you might call prejudiced, and you're well advised to keep yourself to yourself. It's your first ball still in it, lad? Yes, sir. Apart from the scrubs. Well, forget the scrubs. The holiday's over. Move! Davis, you were fool enough to run away from an open ball still and you'll very soon be wishing you were back there. You're in a single room. Now move! Move it! Carlin, you're in a dormitory. Now move! That's it! That's yours, Carlin. You know the ropes and you know why you're here. I'll jump on you from a great height if you so much as breathe. Got that? Yes, sir. There's a lad, big lad, called Pongo in that bed. He heard you were coming. Now grab that bumper and get to work on this floor. I want to shave in it.
Carlin, we don't leave our bed space in that condition in here. Make up your bed pack and put your gear away. On the double! Next time you're on report. Front banks. Carlin's been allocated to your wing. Are you in Shut it, Richards. Three of them together. So you'll have a bit more company, won't you? Sir. And one of them's a jungle bunny. Yes, sir. I said quiet, Richards. Another sound from you, and you're on report. Yes, sir. You off your fucking nut? Possibly. I'm a vegetarian, Carlin, and I've read the rule book. I refuse to wear leather on my feet. I get extra potatoes as substitute for meat, and I'm allowed fish when on the menu. Yeah, but they give you stick for that, mate. Yeah, they do. But it causes them a lot of bother, doesn't it? How long have you been here? A month. Transferred from Dover. Oh, nuisance. No. I told him I was Christ. Some cunning bastard had the typical flash of genius and they banged me in here. A, the governor's a religious maniac. B, they'll knock the shit out of me. How long have you done altogether then? 16 months. Jesus Christ, you must love it. <laughs> Not having me to bastards. I don't eat shit for anyone, and I don't give a monkeys if I do the full two years. I walk out of here on crutches, but they won't have me. Davis, up. <laughs> Davis, you're nothing. I'm the daddy here, and I run this wing. You pay your dues like the rest. Payday, you deliver a quarter of your snap to strike the year. Every week. On the dot. I don't smell. Well, you fucking will do now, Slag. There's no dolly mixtures in here, Pufta. I'm the daddy. And don't you ever forget it. Right? I said right. Congo Banks, the daddy. Yeah. Yeah, Carlin. Your reputation was here well ahead of you, and you're going to have a little weeny bit of bother with that young man. Now, when I came here from Dover, that lot thought I was some kind of nut. Violent psycho, you know? So I give him this wild stare about the eyeballs, and they don't give me no bother. Yes, I think that'll do it for today. You don't do yourself no favours, do you, mate? Carlin, I just want to get through my time in my own little way, causing as much fucking trouble to the screws as possible. In my own little way. OK. Oi, you watch yourself with those pigs.
Get over here and keep my seat warm. Stand up, Coon. Name and number. Up to attention when I come in here. I said up. He said up, didn't he? What's this then? How many feet, lad? What do you think this is? Stand up! Name and number! Angel, sir. Number? <clears throat> Can't remember, sir. Can't remember your number, lad. That's all you are, a number. A number. Four digits. That's all you are. Four, seven, three, six. Name and number. Four, seven, three, six. Angel, sir. Who did this? What, sir? Don't give me this, boy. Who did this? Nobody, sir. Fighting? No, sir. Hell? No, sir. Damaging government property, are we, you black bastard? No, sir. Then what the hell are we doing, you black Brixton slag? Nothing, sir. Fighting. You're booked for fighting. Governor's report, right? I wasn't. Right? And we sign. Attention. Name and number. 4736 Angel, sir. Louder. 4736 Angel, sir. Straight out the banana trees, eh? You take it from me, Nick Nog. You go stealing white man's motor cars and you get white man's stick. Right? Yes, sir. Now get this cell scrubbed. The double! older than most of the trainees here. Yes. Of the books available in the library, uh, they're either trash westerns or hack adventure stories. Now, I can't read that muck. See, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be Roy Rogers or Nanook of the North. My needs are different. The library caters for all trainees here, not single individuals. Uh, besides censoring our mail, you also veto what books are allowed to be sent in to us? I do. Then why haven't I been allowed the two Dostoevsky novels you received for me? They're safely locked away. You'll have them when you're released. <laughs> yeah, I shan't need them, then. Matron. Have you read them? They are classics. Archer, read them or not, Crime and Punishment and the Idiot are hardly suitable reading matter for a young boy in this establishment. Boy? Oh. Trainee. Your feet are disgusting, Archer. You're impudent and foolish. I know of vegetarians who don't eat meat, but that doesn't stop them from wearing shoes. Ooh. Can't be very sincere people, then, can they, matron? Is that all? Yeah, well, I think it's all going to be resolved soon, anyway. Uh, the feet, I mean, and the diet. Yeah, I'm thinking of becoming a Sikh. The governor might have something to say about that. Matron, you know what I used to do with my girlfriend? 
Are you being insolent, Archer? Hold hands. We used to hold hands. Is that all you wish to discuss, Archer? I have work to do. Uh, yes, I think so. Yes. Oh, I keep getting through the days somehow. You know, Machen, when I was last in the block, seven days solitary down there, madam, after much insistence they gave me, besides the belting, my right to a book. It was the Bible. Good. You'll come to no harm with that. It was printed in Yugoslavian, and there didn't have to be an interpreter in the cell. Well, that only goes to show, Archer, that Christianity is universal. Make the report, Matron. I'll run this fucking gaff, and you're dead if you come any of it in here. Leave off, will you? I don't give a fuck who the dead is. I don't want no trouble, so just piss off and let me get on with my time, all right? We'll give you time, you bastard. <coughs> <coughs> Slasher. Here, look at this. It's had a nightmare. Ooh. There's more where that come from, Carly. You just keep your fucking mouth closed. You ain't no daddy here. Yes, sir. What happened to your face, Carlin? I fell, sir. Fell where? On the Quiet, spot. speak when I tell you. Somebody hit you, eh? <laughs> Answer, somebody hit you. No, sir. We know about you, Sonny. Who was it? I fell, sir. On the stairs. Wasn't used to the concrete steps. My own fault. I want none of your tricks here, laddie. Understand that? Yes, sir. Any more of this and you're in trouble. Real trouble. Understand? Yes, sir. Well, move yourself, you like thing, and get a snipe. Move! You're a governor's report. Five six eight Jackson, sir. Late Jackson. No, there were one surplus in the kitchen, so they sent me to you. And get over there and get shoveling. Oh, look at that! All of them were hair. Quiet, Jackson. Or do we want Mr. Teasy Weezy in there with you? Only watched it last night, sir. Quiet, you little puff, and keep shoveling. Sir. What is it, Angel? Can I go to the toilet, sir? No, you can't. Keep shoveling. But, sir, I'm bursting. Keep shoveling. Woods. Yes, sir? What are you supposed to be doing? What, sir? Oh, shoveling, sir. Then shovel it in the barrow. Savvy? When we want it the other side of the channel, we let you know, lad. Right? Sir. Keep it moving. It's not some castles on Margate Beach. Come on, Archer, no slacking from you, you long streak of cabbage. Sometimes, some days, I somehow get the strangest notion they're trying to break my spirit. Yeah, well, you're asking for ancient, mate. 
Get some bleeding boots on your feet. What do you want? Brought him a radio. You can borrow it till we get one sent in. No, thanks. I don't need one. It's up to you, mate. But there's three of us in our dorm's got one, so we ain't gonna miss this one, are we? I'll leave it over here, right? You can let us have it back later if you don't want it. Anyway, your dad will decide and find homes for them. You'll still have Bessie when you come home, but we can't hang on to the pups forever since we don't know when you'll be coming home. So, we hope this finds you as it leaves us, Donald. Let us know how you are getting on and be a good lad. After Dash to catch the post, love from Mum and Dad. They can't get rid of the pups, can they, Ben? I mean, they'll hang on till I get out. And then I can take care of them. I'll get a job. Then I'll buy their grub for them. Will you write me a letter back tonight, Ben? We'll see. Read it again for now, eh, Ben? Just the once. Don't you go to classes? Yeah. Well, haven't they taught you to read yet? No, I can't. I can't understand what they mean. You know, and I don't like asking. Just read it once more, Ben. I'll give you some sweets on payday. Go on, Ben, please. Dear Donald. Ben. What? You forgot the address. Three Almeda Street, Islington, London N1. All right. Dear Donald. On your feet, lad. What's up and great day, this, sir? Whose radio is this, Davis? That's Eckersley, sir. What's it doing in your room? He lent it to me, sir. Come on, lad, let's have the truth. You've nicked it, haven't no, you? Sir, honestly, you nicked it, lad. Don't bullshit me. So you're asking, he bought it in himself, sir. Eckersley has reported his radio missing, and here it is in your room. You're on Governor's report. Look, just tell the governor he lent it to you when you weighed off. You're going to get time in the block this time, mate. It's just a matter of how long. So whatever you do, don't antagonise the old bastard. Yeah, but it's not looking fair, though, is it? Yeah. You're listening to this, aren't you? Yeah, so I don't know what it means. Even fear. Did you do time in the block of Butlin's balls? No, I didn't. Well, you're going to get it here, mate, and so am I. You just keep your mouth shut and sit through it. You cause trouble and they built the shit out of you. And you don't seem like the sort of bloke who's going to stand a lot of their bars and outs. Watch Tasty Reg down there. He's a winner. Fully fledged humanitarian with a BA in hatred. Morning, Mr. White. Morning, sir. Morning, Mr. White. Everything looks fine. Thank you, sir. Morning, Reg. Morning, sir. No 
Yeah. 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 Name and number for the governor? 3936 Kabaya, sir. Everything like Kabaya? Yes, sir. Good. In. Name and number for the governor? 4511 Chambers, sir. Everything like Chambers? Yes, sir. Good. In. Name and number for the governor? 4527 Smith, sir. Everything like Smith? Yes, sir. Good. In. Name and number for the governor? 4396 Chambers, sir. Everything like Chambers? Yes, sir. Good. In. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Apart from absconding, your record at your previous Borstal was clean, Davis, and I have taken that into consideration. However, I will stress that if I deal with you leniently here, it will certainly not be so light should you appear before me again. C.A.V.O.E.? Answer, Governor. Answer. Denomination, Church of England. Yes, sir. Good. Three days in the block. Loss of privileges for one week. Out, sir, a quick march. Out. Out! You in. Put it on the mat, legs apart, and face the governor. Name and number for the governor. 4737 Carlin, sir. Fighting Carlin. Oh, yes. Yes. Now then, Carlin. You were transferred to me because you assaulted an officer at your previous postal, though heaven knows what they expect me to do with you. However, I will have no violence in this institution. There is no violence here. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Yet no sooner are you settled in than well. The marks are visible on your face. You are a generous man, Carlin, but I will not have any trainee take liberties. If you are brought here again, you will be in very serious trouble. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, have you anything to say? Well, not really, sir. Except I wasn't fighting, I fell. Wasn't used to the concrete steps. However, I can understand the officer thinking that I had by the stay at me face. So I've got no excuse, really, sir. I mean, what else could he think? C.A.V. Owen? Oh, yes, sir. My religion's a great comfort to me. Good. Then it may even have some guidance for your reform. Three days solitary in the block. Loss of earnings for two weeks. About to turn. Out! Out! Come on, Carly, move it! Move it double! I said double! <laughs> Meeting? Sir? None of the lads will wear it, Banks. You know they won't. What are they going to do, then? Walk about with pound notes? Pound notes aren't allowed in it, are they, Dugan? A very stiff penalties for anything but small change. And there's very stiff penalties for anyone that tries to undercut my rate. You make sure certain parties know that, Dugan. Right. Come on, Dugan. Now then, that's eight quid altogether, right? I'll get 70 pence for equipment and a screw, right? Your cut's five pence and mine's 15. That leaves 50 pence. 50 pence for a quid? I've got fucking overheads, haven't I? Haven't those bastards heard of inflation? You give them that 50 pence, and if they don't like it, they can see me. Screw. 
I'm granting your request to marry, Betts, and I hope this may induce you to work hard, cooperate, and leave here as soon as possible. It all depends on you. One month hence, released for four hours under escort to marry. Right, Betts? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This causes no little inconvenience, Betts. It's a cost to the taxpayer. And I cannot pretend to be pleased that you're marrying in a registry of it. That's just for now, sir. We're going to have a proper church do when I get out. Hmm. Let's hope you're released before the child is born. Yes, sir. And see you don't misplace my trust, Bert. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, out you go. About turn, quick march. Move it, Bert. Register of it. Archer. In. Name and number to the governor. 4721 Archer, sir. Ah, Archer. Still vegetarian, are we? Uh, yes, sir. And still barefoot, too. Yes, sir. Well, Archer, we have every respect for another man's sincere beliefs here. Individuals to be encouraged in their little trouble and expense. We have procured plastic boots for you. Do you appreciate that? Yes, sir. No objection to plastic, have we? No, sir. Good. Then I hope the cooperation will be reciprocated. Indeed. Have you read the life of St. Francis of Assisi, Archer? No, sir. Though I'm sure it's a most engrossing epistle, sir. It is. The son of a wealthy man, he converted to Christianity in 1208 and turned from his life of pleasure to commit himself to poverty in the life of the gospel. You should read it. As a matter of fact, sir, I wanted to mention access to literature to you, sir. Well, you see, I'm finding myself strongly drawn to Mecca, sir, very strongly indeed. Mecca, Archer? Yes, sir. It, something's stirring within me, sir. Oh, I'm sure you understand what I mean, sir. Archer, you will see the chaplain tomorrow. I'm an atheist, sir. Uh, it's on my record, atheist and vegetarian. You tell them you're Christ at Dover, Archer. You will see the chaplain tomorrow, and there will be no more talk of Mecca in this establishment. Get him issued with the boots. About turn, quick march, move it, Archer. Come on, move, move! Come on, come on, you bastards, move! Save the block, Angel! Get in line, Davis. Come on, move it! Pick those feet off! Enjoy a little holiday, did we? Good. Now you rest assured, my beauties, whenever you feel like a break, it's always there. Always at your disposal. Right, Carlin? Yes, sir. Get moving. Put your gear in your rooms and straight to ablutions. I want work out of you tow rags and plenty of it. Now move! Pick those feet up! Stop it up! What shall we talk about? Any problems? Come along, that's what I'm here for. Why am I so far from home, Matron? Because you murdered that kid. <laughs> All right, Eckersley. Formby and forever explaining this to you, do try to let it sink in. He's 14 years old. 14. Quiet, Archer. But 
I'll never get a visitor. Well, that is unfortunate, Formby, but you have to be detained during Her Majesty's pleasure. As there are no special places for boys like yourself at the moment, you have to remain here. Now, here you have the opportunity to learn and to improve. And if you behave and apply yourself to your duties willingly and to the rules, there may be every chance that Her Majesty or one of her representatives may consider your release and rehabilitation much earlier than you imagine. Much earlier than what, Major? Meanwhile, try to remember that you are more fortunate than boys similar to yourself who are held at Wormwood Scrubs for years until they're old enough to transfer to prison. All right? My dog has three puppies. Three. Is your more letter? Yes, I read it, Woods. That is good news, isn't it? Where are you going, Meekin? Out. Out what? Out, Matron. Will you sit down, please, Meekin? Everything all right with you, Toyn? Yeah, fine, Matron. Good, good. Anything else? Trust. Pardon, Archer. I would like to suggest a discussion on the nature of trust. Are you sure that's not a matter for you to take up with your housemaster? Well, you see, Matron, we are continually bombarded with instructions to trust. Yet at the same time, we are continuously informed that we are completely untrustworthy. So you see, Matron, perhaps it might be of some benefit to all of us if we were to openly discuss the nature of trust and explore those areas where such a valuable commodity may be nurtured and not stifled or eroded. Does anyone want to continue this discussion suggested by Archer? Matron. Yes, Meekin. Well, is there any chance of you calling us by our Christian names? I mean, it's the only reminder of our identities we have left. And now my own feelings on that subject don't enter into it. I'm bound by home office rules as you are. So whatever I may personally feel, well, that is the rule. And we're all here to learn to obey. So... Thank you all for coming. Next week, same time. And if any of you have any problems, do not hesitate to come to me. And if I can't help, I know that Mr. Goodyear will. During my bleeding way. I saw that, man. What's up with you, weirdo? You want striping, dear? You might get left alone here, but I'll cut you a bleeding ribbons if I get any of your poxy lip. Back, Ross! I said, get back, shithead! Yeah, we'll carry on.
Christ, you oh. bastard! I'm the daddy now. Next time, oh. I'll fucking kill you! Oh, 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 oh! oh. 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 Who was it, Richard? Who was it? Carlin? The uh, Carlin? Slip, sir. Give you fucking slip. Right on your feet! Who did this? Come on, who did it? Where's Banks? Sir? Okay, Carling. You're really for it this time. Banks and Richards are both named you. You'll get three years for this, scum. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. You fucking well will, tow rag. I run this wing, and I'm not having it disrupted by a dirty little backstreet villain like you. You'll sign a statement downstairs. I've got nothing to say, sir. I'd like to see the housemaster. Oh, you will, Carlin. You will. And the governor, sir. I've got a witness. Shit, witness. I'm having you, lad. You banged that officer at Rowley. You must be thinking you've walked quietly away from that one. But he's here. He's me. He's every fucking screw in this ball, still every one of us. Now, come on. Any fancy taking a poke at me, eh? Come on, big man. I didn't bang no screw, I retaliated. There was two of them kicking the shit out of me. Well, retaliate here! Come on! I'll have you. Where's Carly? Carly? What? Baldy, the tinted daddy man from B Wing. He wants to meet you. Well, I don't talk this shit. He wants to meet Carly. We know what for. He's a right hard man. When's it gonna be? I'll find him. You tell him, Dugan, he's a black bastard, right? He knows. Rather warm, old chap, don't you think? Yeah. Won't be in this bleeding sweat box for much longer, I can tell you. It's right when the coons keeps them warm in winter, but it's no fucking good to me. All this for nicking 30 bobs worth of junk. You're joking. 30 bobs worth of fucking scrap. Well, my brother had a bit of form, so they stuck it on me. My mother went free with potty. Jesus, that's one for the book. What's you doing, a bank or what? No, Carlin, no. I was merely trying to further a respectable career in the employ of a timber merchant. Clark. You know, my old lady was sick, you know, all the time, fragile. And there was all this stick about giving her a bad time, and then her wanting to see her son secure, respectable, you know, all that shit. So I was sticking out in this office. The only thing was, I got too ambitious, didn't I? Yeah, I wasn't satisfied with dipping my fingers into the petty cash for stamps. Nah, I started working on the cash sales. Making 40, 50 quid on the side most weeks, going to work in a cab. Yeah, until some hard-faced mayor comes back for a swap when I'm out, and, uh, here I am. What was it, your first offence? Well, you know my mouth. Gave a judge a bit of lip. <laughs> didn't know the ropes, did I? She sat there fart-faced under a wig, packs me off the ball stall. Right.
40 pence a quid, that's it. I can't go with that car, man. They'll cut my fucking throat. Yeah, well, that's the way things are now, mate. 40p that or nothing. If you can cut that car, the old bleeding nick will be on you. Right behind Baldy. Fuck them. But don't you see? If banks paid 50, I've got to give them less. That's psychology. If I want to keep hold of them, I've got to be harder than him. Well, you'll have some mug in paying 60. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, 40's way under, Carlin. It won't be worth the risk getting money in. OK. OK, 45. They get 45. But I want it made clear, Dugan, it's a favour. You had to bleed and well beg me, right? OK. You had to plead with me, right? Right. Colin? Sir? Yes, sir. Dugan, Association. Yes, sir. I don't want you hanging around in here. It's one of the most rewarding aspects of this job, encouraging ability and individuality. And a consequence of this is that natural leaders will emerge as they have throughout history. But Carlin, as I am sure you are aware, the gift of leadership entails responsibilities, like setting a good example and keeping order. Leadership means order. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Good. Now then, you came here with a bad reputation. But I am prepared to take you as I find you. You'll have every chance to prove yourself on this wing, Carlin, and even to win back some of the time you've lost through your more unfortunate escapades. As housemaster, I run this wing. I want that firmly understood. Nobody rocks my boat. Do we understand each other? Yes, sir. Very well, then. Just one thing, sir. Yes. I would like a single cell. I think we can arrange that, Mr. Greaves. Yes, sir. Anything else? No, sir. About to move! In you go, Woods. Name a number to the house, Master. Carlin. If there's any bother, we'll have your bleeding guts. Right? I said right. Yes, sir. On your way. Free she had, free puppies. Well, my mum says she doesn't know whether they can afford them. You know, sir, feeding them and all that. Well, I want to find homes for them, sir. And if they can't wait for me to get out, I was wondering if you'd like one, sir. It wouldn't cost you anything. Woods. Yes, sir? You were not brought here to discuss your dog. No, sir, but you see... Quiet, when... Woods. Speak when you're spoken to. I've had you brought here to inform you that you aren't up to scratch, Woods. Your room is dirty, your clothing dishevelled. The reports from your classes are appalling. The list grows, and I am warning you that unless there is a marked improvement in your overall bearing in the near future, you will be in serious trouble. I'll do my best, sir. It's not good enough, Woods. I always seem to be behind, sir. Then do as you're told, lad. You don't have to think for yourself here. It's all laid on. Now, forget all this juvenile puppy business and get down to it. I don't want to see you on report again, right? Sir. Oh, now, come on, come on. 
This isn't racial, it's a game. Right, A-wing this and B-wing that and move! Rules! No punching in the face, no kicking in the goonies, and no biting. What is it? This. It came today. Yes, I know that. Will you read it? But I have already. Read it again. Dear Ronald, sorry we have not wrote to you for so long, but things have been busy. Anyway, we thought we had better let you know that Candy died last week and we buried her. She looked very pretty and looked peaceful. And since you have not seen her for some time, we thought you should know this. Well, have to dash. Things are busy. Good luck, George and Beth. I'll join. Somebody's pet. Dog. Budgie. My wife. Kenny was my nickname for my wife. No strings. Get it down, you sharpish. Vegetarians, I've shit them. <laughs> Carly, that old baldy says to boil a house tomorrow. There'll be a whole crowd of us there shoveling shit. He says just you and him. What? Come on, Davis, move it.
Where's your tool? What fucking tool? This fucking tool. Do you want some more? Leave it up, man. Now I'm gonna tell you once. Just once. You listening to me, Coon? Yeah. You run B-Wing. Right. All right. But for me, I give the orders. Ah. Right? Yeah. You all get your perks, but I'm a daddy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, 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 you get some coal dust rubbed on those marks, you fucking black bastard. Come on, get on with it. We haven't got all day. What legs? <laughs> You man and wife, you can shake the bride. Look, I'm not marrying a fucking coon anyway. Come on, Tyne, you'll have some fun now and again. Let the stand in there moping, lad. Thanks, Mr. Duke. It won't happen again. Oh, that's lovely. Angels. <laughs> you might be a smart ass, aren't you? But you're nothing but a fool to yourself. I'll get by. You'll do the full stretch, do you know that? <laughs> well, they're not having me, Mr. Duke. Oh, I've got to save myself, despite whatever methods you bastards devise to destroy me. I'll get through. Or I, or I won't. But it's my way. Let's slip, Arger. I won't have insolence. <laughs> 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 
Talk's one thing, but I will not tolerate insolence. Right, lad? Right, sir. Look at you sitting there with that daft smile on your face. Why aren't you over there with the rest of them? I'm an atheist. What do you think that lot are? Disciples? Every Sunday there's an officer allocated to watch you. Just because you're too bloody pig-headed to sit in chapel for half an hour. And every Sunday, that's a little bit more you owe us. You know what the boss is like. You're committing a mortal sin sitting here. They're all atheists, but they don't put it about. I did hear you were thinking of turning Indian. I think about all sorts of things. Haven't you seen enough of them in here? Why don't you keep your nose clean and get out? Boredom. No, I never was much good at that. Pass the time quietly. You don't hear me moan, do you, Mr. Duke, eh? I mean, I smile. I smile a lot. You're loose in the head, lad. <laughs> yeah, you know when I was in the scrubs, like sweating it out in that filthy cell, well, I had this matchbox. And it said on this matchbox, it takes 60 muscles to frown, but only 13 to smile, so why waste energy? You see, I'm, I'm doing my time on a matchbox. Jesus Christ. Do nothing with me at the DA. <laughs> nothing. You know, when I was out, I always reminded myself, you can take something good from every experience. Well, the only thing I'll take from Borstal is evil. Because you don't bloody tell the line. No, it's not that, Mr. Duke, no. I mean, now, you take Mr. Goodyear. Right, he rattles out bullshit about character building morning, noon and night. <laughs> well, it's impossible. It's not on. How can anyone build a character inside a regime based on deprivation? It's a one-way contamination. Good, fine minds thrown in with crazy, perverted people. I mean, what am I doing here? Why am I on another wing where there might at least be somebody to talk to, where I could be civilised? I'm always looking over my shoulder. See, if it's not a screw at me, it's a con. Why didn't they send me to an open neck? You're too old for this, lass, I'll give you that. They should have given you a prison sentence. Right. You're right. I was happier in prison. Now I'm going to finish my time with a bunch of snotty young hooligans. Two years of this lot before I retire. How long have you done? A long time. That's an hefty sentence, Mr. Duke. One way or another in prisons. Public service, aren't you? Haven't you realised that some of the lads actually like being in here? Uh, yeah, it's called institutionalised. That's a kill. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> Well, I mean, in there you act, you're punished, and you're free. But outside, out there, you act, you're punished by your own guilt complexes, and uh, you're never free. And what little book did you get that from? This one. Certainly not from what's on offer here. Mr. Duke, I, uh, I don't wish to underestimate your lifetime's work, but uh, the punitive system does not work. I mean, my experience of Borstal convinces me that more criminal acts are imposed on prisoners than by criminals on society. Convinces you, eh? Fancy half of that mob charging up and down your street. Fancy your mother tackling that lot on the rampage. No, you bloody well don't. So what do you do about it, eh? Come on, what do you do about it? I, I talk about it first, like we are. Talk's bullshit. You lock them up. Oh, I'd also consider what happens to their guardians. Watch it, lad. No, come on, I'm serious, Mr. Jim. Well, take yourself. For a weekly wage, you have been locking up men and boys for most of your working life, right? Now. Hanging down your leg is a chain, your key chain, and the length of that chain indicates the time you have spent in the service. Well, you may not have been fortunate, 
in terms of promotion. But the length of that chain gives you rank over other officers of similar rank only. But at the same time, it acts as a constant reminder that although you have spent your life in the prison service, you are still only a basic officer. Now, who gets the stick for that? Us. Who pays for that daily humiliation? Stand up. Wipe that fucking grin off your face before I knock it off. Name and number. 4721 Archer, sir. I give you my fucking coffee and you think you can sit there and have the piss out of me? No, sir, I didn't. I, I never get the chance to express myself. Then it's as well you don't, lad. I was only concerned with men being stripped of their dignity, cons and screws. We aren't much different in here, you know. You're on report for insolence. <laughs> yes, sir. Stand up straight. Seen it, and Jesus, beautiful. I managed to touch you, you know. These visits are going to drive me fucking crazy. Come on, you lot! Look at this floor. Get it clean. Move yourselves. Includes you, Toyn. Sir? Report to my office. Yes, sir. Though the reports may seem minor taken individually, they do mean that altogether you are not pulling your weight, Woods. Three days, lose one month. About turn out. Move it. Archer, in. Feet on the mat, legs apart, and face the governor. Name a number to the governor. 4721, Archer, sir. Ah, Archer. Insolence, graffiti. Guilty. Misplaced trust, sir. How's Mecca these days, Archer? No further information through as yet, sir. Though I am meditating, 
whenever possible. I see. Have you read Alan Brooks' book on Churchill, Arthur? I don't believe I've had that literary pleasure, sir. You should. You should. Seven days in the block. Lose one month. For your meditation, Archer. About to. Out! Move it, Archer! Move! Come on, Archer, move it! Move, Archer! Come on, Archer, double, double! I said double! And the whole of Sea Wing thought the fish was bad, James. Yes, sir. What about the others? Yes, yes sir. sir. No, I, I can answer this, sir. I do remember day in question. Uh, first of all, that fish was not bad. But I do admit it may have seemed strong. Strong, yes, I admit that, but it was not bad. What do you mean strong, Mr. White? Probably some of this new Atlantic fish they're bringing out, sir. <laughs> A strange taste, can seem strong. Ah. Uh, well, you know... You should complain at the time if you think something might be off. I did, sir. Oh. And? Mr. White ate it. Wasn't bad then, was it, lad? Do you think I'd have poisoned myself? That was my dinner. Yes, well, we'll keep an eye out for Atlantic fish. Anything else? The batter's are soft, sir. Well, it always is. I mean, the whole wing moans about it. Mr. White. Of course the batter's soft. It's impossible to make crispy batter. In all my years, catering in all kinds of institutions, I've never been able to make crispy batter. The only way to do that is to buy powdered stuff, and we don't have the money for that. Come in. Tea, sir. Tea, Mr. Goodyear? Why not? Why not? Can we smoke, sir? One quick burn. Permission, Mr. Goodyear. <clears throat> What's that? Nothing, sir. Out. Yes, sir. Yes, well, I think that's covered both wings, Mr. White. Unless there's anything else. And Meekin is satisfied with the batter explanation. Meekin. Meekin. Also, Mr. Goodyear, lad. Stand up. killed himself in the scrubs. He's dead. Look, a solid guy cut his wrist on A-wing and you send him to the scrubs to kill himself. He's dead. Oh, you fucking bastard. I realize there's a bad feeling about what happened to our friend Toyn, and we're all deeply sorry. But these things happen, Carlin, as you know. Many boys arrive here in disturbed conditions, and there simply isn't the staff to cope with them. Anyway, I don't want the boys on this wing behaving erratically. It'll do no one any good. In fact, they'll only make things damn difficult for themselves. I want you to use your influence to keep things down, if you see what I mean. It'll soon blow over. All right, Carlin. Yes, sir. Good. Now off you go. In. Up. Three, three, one, eight meeting, sir. In. Out. Freeze it in my wood, sir. In. Out. 4721 Archer, sir. In. 
Archer. Hello? 4736 Angel, sir. What is it, Archer? There was no exercise today, sir. Request to see the governor, sir. Archer, the rule book. The rule book says exercise is dependent on the weather. It looked like rain. But it didn't, sir. Dirty cell, Archer. Governor's report. Imagine that in the back of a Mercedes. Yeah, just like a bird I used to knock off. Play a pair of Bristols. Do anything she would, anything you wanted. Oh, I've had plenty of birds like that. Finn, no. Mind you, Finn birds always go potty for me. Christ. When I get out of here, the big time, big stuff, I've got some ideas. And that's one thing about the Nick. You never come out short on ideas. And you know where you went wrong. Well, you get it from your mates. Sort through their mistakes. You can learn a lot in there if you use your loaf. Bank's the best, though. Well, you do one big job and you set up for life. Yeah, planning. That's all it needs, planning. And plenty of bottle in, bang, and out. There's no shortage of birds, then. Yeah, but I never have been short of birds. Always have plenty of crumpet after me. Listen to Burt Reynolds. Watch your mouth, Jackson. The only crumpet you've had is with your fist. Yeah, and you'll be getting my fist in a minute. Leave off, will you? We're sick of hearing you do. Oh, hey, hey, hark at our bent friend. You two fancy yourselves, eh? Piss off. You two couldn't organise a piss-up in a brewery. I'll have you, Rose. I'll cut it out, Richard. Cut it out, Richard. You got some front, and ya? We all saw how big you were when Carlin sorted you out. Yeah. You and your mate, Pongo. If there's any more bother, you'll get it again. Nichols, these do fit me steps out of line. You know that, don't you, shithead? Yeah, well, anyone comes near me gets striped, all right? I mean, who they fucking are? Just remember, shitbag, that people get moved around. And Carlin ain't gonna be here changing your nappies forever. The way he's arse-licking, he'll be out in a month. And I'm gonna carve you two bastards up. First chance I get. Just remember that, the pair of you. Is it all right if we have a quick burn, sir? OK, but don't take too long about it. There's work to be done. What do you want? Ah! Oh, oh, no. Turn him over. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Please no! Oh. No! Oh. No! Oh. No! Please no! 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 Oh. 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 No! Have you? 
lazy bastards. <laughs> Davis, what are you doing there? What happened? Well, lad? Nothing, sir. Nothing. I fell, sir. Well, fall back onto your feet. is not Kew Gardens, laddie. <laughs> On your feet. in the laundry today. All bleeding day. Murder. I ate it in there. Not bad tomorrow, though. On the gardening detail. I like that. Get some air. Like a holiday. <laughs> Can always imagine you're not in this thinking you know. <laughs> you're on gardening tomorrow and all. Your name's on the list. I'll see you then. Right, Davis, what is it? Speak up. Why do you ring that bell? Don't you know it's an offence? I feel lonely, sir. Frightened, sir. I don't close my eyes. Nightmares. I feel bad, depressed. I don't know what to do. Cut that out, Davis, or I'll give you something to cry about, you mardy ass little toe rag. You touch that bell again for no fucking reason. I'll have you down the block before your feet touch the ground. Now get your subnormal head down. Move! <laughs>
Davis, Governor's report. Goes in the bins. Eight.
apparatus to pay for. Lots of earnings for all until every damaged article is paid for. To encourage you to work hard and make good this willful debt with all expediency, there are no privileges, none. You have to earn them. Now, with regard to our absent friend, I would remind you all that sad and unfortunate accidents occur in institutions like this just as they do outside. We are all accident prone, even here. It is most regrettable that I will tolerate no further outbursts like the one recently witnessed. I will not tolerate it. There will now be one minute's silent prayer for our departed friend. 